Probably the thing that I use shortcuts for the most is in my editor, like Sublime. This is one of the nice things that I've been realizing between Sublime and Atom, and I think one of the nice one of the main reasons I keep on switching between the two is some of the, the shortcuts are exactly the same. Like the the shortcut where you just command or control, you click on a few different lines and then you get the multiple cursors. And then anything you do or type is just duplicated across all of those lines. It's super simple, super nice. Um, and it's exactly the same in both. Did you know that because, so a lot of um, in-browser developer tools uh, use CodeMirror for, for their editor. And because it now supports like Sublime Text shortcuts for in a lot of cases, you can use command click in like, I believe it's Chrome DevTools, Firefox DevTools, and I haven't checked IE, but meh, maybe? Hopefully. Nice. Something someone could file a bug for if it, if it doesn't support it just yet. <laughs> so all the bugs. A shortcut that I use quite a lot um, is Command R. And that basically lets me go and look up a symbol. So let's say I'm working on a little utility library and I want to, to search through the methods. Command R would just like list them out in a nice pretty list for me. I can easily just jump to any method. Nice. That's really cool. It'd be really, really good if you could get to a point where, like with ES6 classes, if it could point to other files that you're importing in this one. Yes. I used to love that from like all the IDEs from like native development. Yeah. I think I want to say that WebStorm supports something like that. But I could be wrong. I think they're like some of their IntelliSense stuff is intelligent enough to figure that out. That but makes sense. Yeah. I could be wrong. On top of on top of command click, another thing you sometimes need is the ability to, to smart replace. Do you do you do that in Atom a lot? Mm, don't know what it is. Okay, so smart replace is useful for like let's say you've got a variable name or namespace where you want to replace all the instances of it um, very quickly, and you're working with a ton of different variables. You just like select one instance of it, use a shortcut, and you can just type in whatever you want and it'll replace it. Nice, kind of nice. So is that just a bit more intelligent than something like just? Command F or whatever, just for like find and replace. Yeah, it's it's in case you need a little bit more flexibility. Okay, cool. So one thing, so I I love to do apps. To do MVC, just casually drop that in there. Just, just casually dropping it in. You know, if you if you uh, if you create a to do list, it's got like if if the first to do is make a to do list and the second is like check off the first thing on the list, you've already done two things. You can you can go off and have tacos. So you've, <laughs> you've accomplished a lot. Um, so I use, um, I use a Sublime shortcut. I think it's uh, Shift-Command-L to select a line of text. And then I use another shortcut that lets me like, wrap that text um, inside of HTML tags. And I can go and customize what type of tag is actually in there, which is kind of neat. I've played around with this before, but only through Emmet. I don't think Atom has that command. But it's super nice, because yeah, you just you hit that one command, add p tags to the, like, the ends of those lines. And the next thing you type is just you're going to replace the p yep. in that tag. It's really, really simple. That's pretty neat. So I've used I've used the Emmet plugin for Sublime as well, and uh, it is pretty neat. It's actually um, a little bit more advanced than the wrapping stuff I was showing before, where like you've got, um, I, I think with Emmet you can actually uh, supply complex class names and tell it, you know, um, I want it to add a variable that includes the current index for each item in the list, which can be nice if you're working on a markup list of some sort. Like Emmet's entire thing seems to be around trying to make you spit out boilerplate code in the shortest possible form yeah. that you can. Yeah. The biggest problem that I had with it, and generally with all these keyboard shortcuts, is like how do you remember what the shortcut is to then use it? Because the minute you've got it in your head and you understand yeah. it, it's fine because yeah. at that point it's like it comes down to muscle memory. Yeah. But it's getting to that point. Like, how do you remember the shortcuts? Do you... I think it, part of it is just using them on a daily basis. Like, um, with the, the stuff I was showing before, another shortcut I, I commonly use is like a, a line bubbling thing that lets me move items up and down. And it's just the fact that I use lists a lot in my daily workflow mm. that, that makes me, that forces me to remember these things. Um, something that a lot of my friends do is they actually, you're, you're, you are my friend. Uh, colleague. Um, so uh, one thing that my friends do is they'll like print out a cheat sheet of the, the shortcuts they use pretty commonly and they'll just like have it sitting right next to their keyboard and they'll be looking at it every day and eventually you'll, you'll remember it. Thanks colleague. Um, <laughs> so that actually kind of makes sense. It kind of sounds like one of those old blocks where it's like this is the word of the day and then you learn a new word every day except you could just have it with keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. Just on your desk like a nice little pile. Print it out on some paper. It's great. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of killing trees and what have you, but it's fine. We'll just pretend that doesn't exist. Trees trees can't give you YouTube likes, Matt. <laughs> that is true. 